So today I have a break, a brief break from my airline life. So we're gonna do some real estate related things today. So we're gonna start out today by uh, driving past um, a property that uh, just hit the market. Um, it's a three unit apartment building. Um, so we're gonna take a drive by and uh, see what it looks like from the road. All right, so here's the property. It's got some garage. Looks like those are the doors for two of the apartments back there. So driving around to turn around here, it looks like it just ends in a cul-de-sac here, so there won't be any traffic driving through, so it should be a nice, quiet spot. And not a lot of traffic, good place for kids to be. Apparently, the first floor is an apartment, the second floor is an apartment, then up here above the garage is the third apartment. Now this property does, or it does apparently have about a half an acre with it. Looks like this stone driveway kind of goes where this yeah, partially paved, paved driveway actually goes back to some more houses. So I guess that's actually a little road. Looking up at the roof, the roof actually looks like it's in very nice condition. I don't see any like missing shingles or anything like that. Discoloration, any damage anywhere. So we just got done with a quick uh, drive by of that possible uh, investment property. Um, so now we're gonna head uh, over uh, to our PO box. We actually do have one of our tenants that still does like to uh, send a check for their rent. So we're gonna go pick that up and get that deposited. Just remember we have a couple light bulbs out in the house and our garage door isn't working correctly right now. So we're gonna go take a look at some stuff. Well, we just got done with uh, the errands we needed to run and uh, I just got the addresses of two properties that another investor that I know is selling. Um, so we're gonna go quick drive past those and uh, see what we think. All right, so here's the first property. Looks like this one is in eh, not bad shape. Definitely needs some work. It's not that easy to see from the road. And here is the other one. Here's the back of the property. A little bit of storage back here. I first want to tell you guys that last year when my wife and I decided that we would get really serious about real estate, when I first started analyzing properties, my property analyzing tool was an Excel spreadsheet. Super simple. It was like just two pages. Did very basic stuff. It did the job, but it was very simple. After using that first pretty simple calculator for about a month or two, I switched to another calculator that I got from a different investor that was really fancy. It had like seven different pages. It calculated all sorts of things that the first one didn't, you know, amortization, different like taxes that you might have, um, different returns you could get, different ways of thinking about your returns, different, all sorts of different calculations I didn't even know that could be important when you're analyzing a property. So I started using that one and used that one for another couple months. Now, for anyone who's talked to me probably within the last year, you know that I am a huge fan of bigger pockets. And one of the steps that my wife and I took at the beginning of the last year when we decided that one of our New Year's goals was that we were going to get serious about real estate was that we were going to get me a membership through bigger pockets, which allowed me to have access to well, one, the rental property calculator to help me analyze deals, access to their rent estimator, um, the calculator to help add up the costs when you were going to rehab a property, all sorts of other stuff. They have forms there so you can get support from other investors and troubleshoot problems that you might have that they've seen before, all sorts of stuff. And so that's what I'm going to use today to take a look at these properties. So we're gonna start out with just looking at this first property. And this is 
going to end up being an example of a property that I'm probably not going to make an offer on and trying to buy, unless we can make an offer that was much lower than what they're asking for. So first thing we're going to do in the bigger pockets calculator is put a picture in for the property so we can remember it when we go back to look through our archived um, property analysis and the address. Next, we're going to put in the purchase price, which was $510,000 for this property, and input closing costs, which I usually figure in at about 1.5% of the purchase price. Next, we'll put in down payment, which I put at 20%, since this is an investment property. I checked what the average interest is right now, and it's right around 6.6% for a mortgage, and I put this as just a regular mortgage at 30 years. Next, we input rental income. I looked at Zillow, and just knowing what I know about the market, I figured that the two-bedroom apartments could probably rent for about $1,500 each, and the single bed could probably go for at least 1000 so that's how I ended up with 4000 for rental income. Now, this is just a really quick analysis. So I just want to know rough numbers and if the numbers look like they could work. And if they do look like they're going to work, then I dig deeper. So I usually, for the expenses, I just use numbers that are off Zillow. Usually I find that those numbers are sometimes high. If they're low, then they're low, and then I go and adjust them later. But I took the numbers for property taxes and insurance right off Zillow. After that, I figured in some money to be set aside for maintenance, vacancy, and capital expenditures. They also have a section there for your property management, but since this property is close to where we live, we would just manage it ourselves, so we put a, I didn't put anything in there for that. And again, I am right now just roughly figuring out best case scenario if this property would work. Because if it can't work on its best day, it's going to be an absolute disaster if things go incorrectly. So I figured in for the rest of the expenses, trash, water, sewer, all that, that it is separately billed and can just be billed directly to the tenant. So that would mean that the utilities would be no expense for us. So I finished the analysis, and what does it tell me? Well, right off the bat, I'm going to be losing $5 a month. So we're not buying it, right? It looks like it's going to take almost $110,000 to close on this property. But hold on a second. Let's take a look at these expenses. Remember I said that they were just rough estimates taken from Zillow. So there is likely high likelihood that I could talk to my insurance agent and my agent could tell me that the insurance could be, you know, drastically lower than what we're estimating for. Same deal with some of those variable expenses. If you're in a good market and you have a good tenant, you might not have 5% vacancy. You might only have one or two or they might just stay for 10, 15 years. You never know. So let's look at some of these projections. On the cash flow line, Right off the bat, you're losing $68. But in year one, you'd be making $555. And in year two, $1,191. And let's pay attention to that profit if sold line. Year one, or right off the bat, if you sold it, you'd lose $8,000. Then the next year, you'd make $8,000. In year two, you would make $24,000. And Bigger Pockets figures out all of its information just going off of historical data of just a few percent, three percent or so of appreciation with rents and property values a year. Nothing crazy like the past few years. So now let's take a look at that cash flow line, the fourth line down there. In year five, you'd be cash flowing three thousand it was two hundred dollars a year. In year fifteen, ten thousand seven hundred. And in year thirty, twenty five thousand dollars of cash flow in the year. And how about profit if sold? In year five, if you sold the property, you would make $80,000. In year 15, you'd make $361,000. And if you held this property and did nothing with it, just appreciated, you didn't refinance it, pull money out or anything like that, it just sat, you took care of it, it appreciated. If you then sold it in 30 years, you would profit with what you made over the years and by selling it over a million dollars. So am I going to buy this property? Now, over the long haul, 
if I would hold this property and sell it in 30 years, I can make over a million dollars on it. You know, year one of just making a couple hundred dollars throughout the year and then right off the bat losing money the first couple months, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me right now. So if I do offer on it at all, it's going to be at a very reduced price so that the numbers make sense for me right off the bat. But most likely, we won't be offering on it. Hopefully, this was helpful for you. Thank you for watching. Uh, Feel free to subscribe so you can watch any future videos that we come out with. Hope you have a good day, and we'll see you in the next one.